and I'll show you what's meant by rich and lean when it comes to actually adjusting carburettors. I'm hoping going into it in depth this way and doing it diagrammatically will dramatically improve the way you adjust your carburettor and hopefully save you money so you can do it yourself. And by the way, this doesn't matter whether it's on a Still, a Husqvarna, a Ryobi, any kind of brand with John Sered, McCulloch, McAllister. The actual adjustments principle are the same for all on a two-stroke carburettor. So let's have a look at it. Now, obviously, this isn't on the machine, but let me just show you there. You can see your high screw there. That's your high screw. There's a little H. And then you've got your low screw there. There's a little L. So high and low. Now what we need to be doing on these when they're actually in situ on the machine is we get a screwdriver and screw these right in until they can't go in anymore. So that will set them at ground zero if you like. And then we turn them out one full turn each and we can go from there. So here we are looking at it diagrammatically. This is the high screw H and the low screw L. And we've got the fuel tubes here that come out into the main jet area and out into the Venturi to the engine. So this is like a cross-section diagram of the carburettor if you like. If you were to cut it in half it would look something like this basically. It wouldn't look exactly like this. This is a basic way of me drawing this to explain the workings of it anyway. If we look at this here this is the Venturi where the air comes through from the air filter right through and to the engine. And what I've done here I've illustrated that we've screwed the high screw and the low screw right in till they stop and what that's done is that's prevented the fuel from going any further than this point so it's come down and stopped there on both of them so it's a fuel block off at the moment because the jets are right in and it's important to remember at this point the engine isn't running anyway I mean it can't anyway because it can't get any fuel down because we've blocked it off but at this point the engine's stationary now what I've explained here is that we've now opened each jet one full turn so the high jet one full turn and the low jet one full turn and it's opened up that gap slightly and now it's willing to accept fuel down this pipe down both of these pipes but remember at this stage still the machine hasn't started the engine's not running so there won't actually be any suck down so much but there is a gap there to allow some to come down once we need it so we've set them in preparation for starting the machine now we just need to look at the tick over this is the tick over screw here and basically a tick over screw normally pushes straight on to a special plate that's attached to the butterfly inside the Venturi. This here butterfly is responsible for the amount of airflow that comes through and into the engine. So adjusting the tick over just a little so the butterfly is slightly off its sides of the Venturi there. That's the way I normally do it so it's just slightly off. So that's the way I normally do it. The slight opening of the tick over screw and one turn of each. I always concentrate on the H, the high screw first. This diagrams illustrating that the engine's now running and what I've actually done I've actually pressed my throttle trigger in full and started the engine and you can see now the workings of what's going on let me just explain when I got the engine going here I've unscrewed this back even a little bit more because I could tell by how the engine was laboring it needed more fuel it needed richening up slightly so richening it up means giving it slightly more fuel so unscrewing it slightly more just just quarter of a turn if that just richens it up with fuel that little bit more and allows more to come down that of course allows more to be integrated in with the air there so that it can atomize in with the air that's what the venture is for to atomize and mix with air inside this venture here so i've got this throttle wide open and i've got it working at full speed air's rushing through and as it rushes through it draws this fuel out this is the main jet it draws this fuel out of there mixes and goes into the engine and I can tell by adjusting that either out or in and listening to the engine on how it's performing whether it's performing weak or whether it's performing quite strong or it seems to be choking up I can adjust this accordingly and make the mixture either stronger meaning richer or weaker meaning leaner so leaner will be going in and richer will be coming out allowing more or less of this fuel. So whilst I'm at it and I've still got my finger on, on the throttle, if I was to pull it out that little bit more, you can see there even more fuel is coming out now, absolutely more. So what I'm tending to get now, I'm starting to get is more fuel going in than air, quite a lot more fuel. And if, if I carry on like this, it'll affect the engine. It will be too strong a mix of fuel to air mixture, 
for the engine and the engine will start to lag a little. And then when the engine starts to lag, it draws in less air. And that even adds to the problem where you've got less air than you have fuel. And so the engine reduces its efficiency. So looking further, so looking when it's even more rich, so I've screwed it right out now, almost, and it's allowed a lot of fuel to come through, way too much. You can see there the ratio is not good. You've got much less air there than you have fuel. What's happened is the engine can't cope with this amount of fuel by now, and it will be really lagging. So it won't be working at its full capacity. It won't be doing as many revolutions per minute, and it will, won't be drawing as much air in either so there won't be as much drawing through and this is when you get the engine start to choke up it can coke up and it can ruin spark plugs it just isn't efficient and it won't give any power any real power to the engine so if we screw it in and lean it up a little bit now so there's less fuel coming through you can see we've got a better mix there and the engine will start to pull back up again and start to sound a little better and if we keep going at that and just listen carefully we can get the engine sounding its best this is probably it working at its optimum you've got a good amount of air going through and a good amount of fuel so the combustion inside the engine here will be so much better it won't coke up the spark plugs it'll have more power and things will be working properly remember we're still working only on the h at the moment this is how we do it we work on the h first to get the high revs right remember it's high revs because we've still got full throttle open we're holding that with a finger now if we start to go too lean and we start to screw that screw in too much we can see there we're blocking it off and we're going lean we've got less fuel coming down into the venturi through the main jet and what's happening is you've got more air coming in than fuel so again you're going to get deficiencies in the way the engine works strangely the engine actually runs a little revs a little higher when you reduce the amount of fuel and increase the amount of air although it revs higher it doesn't actually give any more power it just seems to rev higher and use the air that's available and the bit of fuel that's available and i suppose it, it doesn't have to try too hard to combust the amount of fuel that's coming through so it can manage with this amount quite quite well but it doesn't actually give the best performance in terms of power and i wouldn't recommend we go too lean because with a two-stroke remember that the only lubricant for the engine is that that's coming through with the fuel so if we lean the fuel up too much and have too little it could go towards seizure of the engine there'd be less lubricant there then we get what we call metal transfer like welding together the piston and the barrel basically it gets too hot so let's have a look what happens when we get even leaner now we've got a real state here of really lean so we screwed it right in we've got a tiny amount of fuel coming through and you can see we've got a bit less air coming through actually because now we haven't got enough fuel for efficient combustion and the engine revs are going to go down again so in, when the engine revs are going down also it can't pull air in either so something needs to be done when it gets to this point point. and if we were to keep screwing the high screw in until it stops and blocks the fuel off completely with the full throttle on we haven't got an efficient amount of fuel there to go into the venturi in order to go into the engine it's just going to stop and nothing's going to come through obviously similarly if we were to just let the throttle go back and let go of the trigger then there'd be no air coming through and so no fuel could be drawn through into the engine. That's providing the tick over screw is right back to allow the butterfly there, the air butterfly, to seat on each side of the Venturi and the engine would stop. That's regardless of whether you've got this open or not. Now one thing I wanted to mention at the end here, and I don't know if you've noticed, although you can see there on the main jet you can see fuel being drawn out at this point, the air coming through drawing the fuel out. It also does to a small point here on the low screw that gives a little amount even at full throttle but there's not enough of it to keep the engine going on its own so once this is stopped working efficiently by adjusting that or if it's blocked and needs cleaning then really you're not going to get any of this performance although this helps out it's there for low revs and I'll explain them now so let's say we've got this at an happy medium and the high revs you're on full chat there you're on full throttle the high revs are working well the engine sounds good so we've got this side now sorted We've had a look at what happens if we go too far out and too far in. We've got it nicely working now. So let's have a look at the L screw, the low screw. Now this is where the low screw comes into its own. Firstly, as we adjusted earlier, the tick over. So it's slightly off the sides there so that we can get some flow going through. So we don't need to hold the throttle anymore. We're letting this screw here do it for us. What I normally do then, I let it idle and then I'll adjust this screw either in or out and listen to the engine 
as to whether or not it's sounding efficiently or not. As you can see here, it's letting a certain amount out at this point because remember this is still on one turn. We, we haven't adjusted this one yet. We only adjusted this one, so this is out one turn. And at the moment, looking at this diagram, we can see that it's not a bad mix there of air and fuel. So the engine might work quite well. The engine might tick over quite well. So we've got to get it just right. But let's have a look if we adjust that. Let's have a look what happens. So if we look here, we've opened that slightly, that there's more fuel coming through because we've turned this out. So more fuel's coming down there. And because it's on tick over, there isn't large volumes of air being rushed through because the engine isn't working so fast and drawing air in so harshly. So it's not going to really draw much out of the main jet. That's That main jet's designed to give fuel when there's a lot of air rushing past it. This is a little more subtle and so a, a more gentler flow of air will draw its fuel out here providing we've got this right here, providing we've got the right setting and the right amount coming down the, the fuel tube. So we can see here then it's getting a little richer now and it'll have a different tone to the engine and we've got to decipher whether that tone's right or wrong. But at this point there I can see it's bordering on towards getting quite rich. I've only put fuel entering here just to explain that it probably does give up some fuel just so we don't think that these are working independently. They actually work together but at certain times as in high revs and low revs they come into their own. So if we screw it out a little bit further, the low screw, still on tick over, still in the same position with the butterfly, we can see now it's getting quite rich. It seems a decent combination between air and fuel at the moment. I would say the engine's working quite efficiently and revs are going up and then from that I would bring the tick over screw out to shut this off slightly, to bring the RPM down slightly, to bring it to an RPM that we're happy with. We could adjust it from there. But from a mixture point of view, that looks okay to me. But each individual machine does need a different amount of fuel to air mixture. We can't say this is the right amount of fuel for one, so it'll be the right amount of fuel for others. And also different brands of two-stroke oil and whether or not the fuel is fresh or not. It'll all depend on how we mix these mixture screws. It'll have a different effect on the engine. I and mean, if we were to screw this in to make it a little leaner, obviously we'd get less fuel going in than air. So it would be a weaker mix and a lot leaner. You'd see the, the efficiency going down then in the engine start to just change slightly. So now screwing the low screw in even further we can see we're getting to a really lean state now and we've, because we've got a less amount of fuel going through there's less combustion going on in the engine. The engine revs have come down less air coming through similar to the H. So going back now to an efficient tick over we can see we've got the right amount of air, the right amount of fuel, the engine's working at its best and we can adjust the tick over the high and low revs a little there just to tweak it. And we've got that side sorted now. So at that point, that's how it all works in theory. And this is the carburetor now working at its full capacity and working how it should. Obviously there are variations in the way carburetors are made. This is how I've drawn this to try and basically illustrate what I was trying to explain. And I hope I've explained it okay. Thank you for listening. Please, if you have any questions, please contact me. I will always be there to answer them. And thank you for those that have subscribed. And I would like, please, if you could... Uh, to subscribe to me and I will be putting on some more content. Thank you very much. Bye.